Hi, Dr. Dan here again. Today I'd like to talk about abnormal pap smears. Probably someone you know or yourself has had an abnormal pap smear in the past, and I know when it happens, it creates a lot of anxiety. So what exactly does it mean and what should we be doing about it? So pap smears, as you know, have been one of the most successful screening tools for cervical cancer that's ever been invented. It's a very simple test that merely just scrapes some cells off the outside of your cervix that the pathologist can analyze and decide whether you have any precancers or sometimes it'll even pick up cervical cancers. So when you have an abnormal pap smear these days, usually the next step is to see your gynecologist where they're going to do what's called a colposcopic exam. Colposcopic exam is nothing more than here using this microscope to look closely at the cervix under magnification. It allows us to see areas that we would take a biopsy of that look abnormal. From the results of those biopsies, then we can decide what type of treatment you need based on what type of precancer you have. For example, people that have just mild precancer or what we call mild dysplasia, we usually don't treat them because we know up to 60% of these will go away by themselves. However, if you have moderate, severe precancer or what we call carcinoma in situ, those are usually precancers we would want to treat. How do we treat these type of precancers? Well, there are three major treatments out there that you'll hear about. Cryotherapy, which has been around for many, many years, which is nothing more than just freezing the cervix. Then we have another local ablative technique called laser. And laser is just a more precise way of ablating abnormal cells on the cervix. The third thing you'll hear about is what we call a leap or a cone biopsy. This type of procedure actually excises a portion of your cervix. In some instances, that leap or cone biopsy are critical to making a diagnosis, to being sure that you don't have an invasive cancer, and to make sure that we know exactly what's going on. However, that leap or cone biopsy can also damage a fair amount of your cervix. So what we don't want to do is to be using these leaps or cone biopsies in instances where we don't have to, especially in young women that want to get pregnant who maybe will have one, two, or three leap excisions by the time they go to get pregnant, the cervix has been so severely damaged that they either can't get pregnant or they can't carry a pregnancy because so much of the cervix has been ablated that it just can't hold the pregnancy in. So we try to be very, very stingy about doing leaps or cone biopsies of the cervix for precancers. As gynecologic oncologists, we know that there are easier ways to treat most of these precancers. And my recommendation for most patients is laser because it's very precise, it damages the least amount of tissue in order to accomplish the end of eradicating all the precancer. Again, like we've said before, there are situations where you have to do the cone or you have to do the LEAP procedure to A, know that there's no invasive can uh, cancer anywhere, and B, make sure that you clear the margin of the precancer. This is most common with a precancer called adenocarcinoma in situ. That precancer starts up inside the canal where you can't see it, so you never know whether you're getting all of it out. Once we have a diagnosis of adenocarcinoma in situ, most of the time we're recommending a cone biopsy to be sure that there's no invasive cancer and that we clear the margin so that you can go on and try to get pregnant. Again, if there's any questions about the diagnosis of an abnormal pap smear, cervical precancers, or adenocarcinoma in situ, we're here to help, so please reach out and give us a call. Thank you.